Hello, this is Don Kamareczka from Photo Geek Weekly, uh, answering a question that I get quite often. How do I convert a flash to take ultraviolet fluorescence photographs? That's something that I'm quite fond of. You can make plants glow into very uh, futuristic or science fiction-like colors. Uh, but you have to create one of these. This is a flash that will emit only ultraviolet light. Uh, to do so, we actually have to take apart a flash, remove some components, and then tape some new components on top. So the flashes that I typically use for this are inexpensive. They are Yongnuo 660s. And it's important that I'm taking this right out of the box and working on it then, because you do not want to have any risk of electrical shock. I've never put any batteries within this flash, uh, and I can be certain that the capacitors are drained. Now, if you're not certain, if you don't know how to handle this stuff yourself, then maybe don't attempt this. Uh, you do so at your own risk because there is a very high, uh, high voltage capacitor within this flash, although we won't be anywhere near that in the way that we're going to be modifying this. So there's basically two screws on the flash itself, and there are these little rubber um, covers on the side of the flash. We're going to have to take those off, and we're going to have to take out those screws, and then we're going to have to put it back together once we take something out. So the process is pretty simple. All right, one screw out, out as well. Now these little uh, rubber circles, you can just kind of wedge a screwdriver in underneath there and uh, they'll eventually pop out. There we go. So underneath this, um, uh, this little uh, rubber circle, you've got these two little clamps, and you've got to remove those as well. So I'm going to do that for both sides. One clamp came off of that one automatically. There's another. One more, and another. So once you have those clamps off, the flash will come apart. So what we're going to have to do here is take a look and see which side the electronics are going to be seated and rested in. Let's take it off this way. And so what we have to do here is take out these two pieces of glass, or uh, plastic rather, these will block or otherwise absorb ultraviolet light, and uh, we need those out of the equation. We need just the bare flash bulb head to be uh, sending out all of its light. It's a xenon flash, so xenon will emit visible light, infrared, ultraviolet, a lot of stuff. We only care about the ultraviolet in this case. So once we've gotten those pieces of plastic out, we can simply start putting it back together, putting back in the screws and those clamps, uh, and then we can put something on the front of the flash to stop visible light from coming out uh, and ruining our, our ultraviolet fluorescence images. Now that we have the flash back together with these two pieces of plastic out, we have to put filters in front of the, uh, the flash head that will block visible light, but let all of the, or at least most of the ultraviolet light through. This is a combination of two separate filters. One is a, a Hoya U340 filter. You can't find those through a lot of normal camera shops, but you can find them very easily on eBay. The other one is from a company called Midopt, and it is the Midopt BP365. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with the name, well, it's because they usually make scientific type equipment. So you'll have to go through one of the distributors on their website to find that filter. One of these filters works perfectly, except bleeds a little bit on the red side. And one works perfectly, but bleeds a little bit on the, uh, the purple side. So you combine them together, and it gives you a very, very clean ultraviolet signal with no um, visible light coming into the equation. So to stick that on the front of the, uh, the flash, gaffer's tape. Very simple. This is a, a rather large roll of it. I've got smaller rolls that I've used just as well. Typically, I'll take... Uh, just one piece on the side, one piece on the other side, 
and then wrap around from there. The filters that I'm using are 77 millimeter filters because that's approximately what the size of the flash head is. But if I was to be using smaller filters, it would work just as well and cost less money. I just might not have as much total output from the flash. So it's important that once I have the, uh, the filters secured, that I also wrap around the entire flash head so that no visible light can escape and contaminate my images. And there you have a flash modified to emit only ultraviolet light. Thanks for watching this video uh, and be sure to check out my podcast, Photo Geek Weekly at photogeekweekly.com where we talk about all of the photographic industry geekiness that comes on a weekly basis, all of the news stories that we can really sink into uh, and discuss weird oddities of photography just like this.